The 21st Century Crisis The final great power conflict arose as a classic Thucydides trap between the People's Republic of China and the United States. Weakened by pandemics and beset by internal divisions, the United States was quickly supplanted in global leadership. Smelling weakness after failed American interventions across the Middle East, China rapidly expanded its influence. The Russo-Ukraine war had dragged the Russian military to the point where it lost offensive capacity. With the mass shipment of armor and artillery systems from NATO stocks, Ukraine was able to make gains, pushing close enough to the Sea of Azov to effectively drive away the Black Sea Fleet. Combined with a push across the Dnieper with marine brigades, this meant Ukraine threatened Crimea and severed the dream of Novorossiya. The Russian elite fell to assassination. Peace negotiations commenced and dragged out while the war settled into deadlock. The resulting peace saw the Ukraine give up bits of its territory in the Donbass, but an exhausted Russia soon faced multiple rebellions across the Russian Federation. Crimea was evaluated. Belarus was stuck a suspicious insurgency. Kaliningrad was blockaded, nuclear weapons placed in Poland. The situation necessitated the redeployment of American armor and army aviation to Eastern Europe. A recalcitrant Russia had been mollified into neutrality. Its cyber attacks had been met by creating an American cyber core. SALT III limited strategic tensions and the expansion of the alliance halted by means of a treaty between Russia and the multinational bloc. The American intelligence services enacted a strategy to destabilize China, emptying its prisons of Salafist captives and sending them to Xinjiang in China and Khuzestan in Iran. The Middle East, forever a cauldron of threats, finally succumbed to Iranian power from Syria through to Iraq and from the borders of the new Ottoman Empire down to the Horn of Africa. A Saudi official named Ali Zabiar overthrew the monarchy. The Shia power seized the oil fields in the east of the country. This Sunni Wahhabi caliphate was allowed to war with Iran incessantly while American forces mustered for a full-scale assault. It was a chance to lose the Afghanistan syndrome that had plagued the United States foreign policy establishment since the loss of that long insurgent conflict. The U.S. and its alliances assaulted the Islamic Republic, quickly enveloping the Iranian army in Khuzestan. This area, infested with spies and special forces, was the seat of Arab resistance against Iranian power. The Iranians moved into this province, seeking to block the approach from Kuwait. Iraq and Lebanon were also alighted with low-intensity warfare. Missiles rained into Saudi Arabia. The American General Staley appeared to be losing the initiative, but this was merely a calculated ruse. Once the Iranians had massed forces outside of the country, and particularly to oppose the approach from southern Iraq and Kuwait, American bombers enacted the passes of death, bombing entire supply convoys out of existence. This blocked the retreat up the Zagros Mountains. The Americans moved from the Straits of Hormuz landing beaches. They wheeled into the breakaway province, the left wing of this force keeping its flank to the mountains. The pincers met at Shiraz. The Iranians retaliated by moving south and continuing to support small terrorist attacks. China threatened to intervene, giving the Americans an ultimatum backed up by a significant portion of Chinese naval power. On the day of the ultimatum's expiration, a reinforced American brigade launched an assault from Armenia towards Tehran itself. The Chinese Navy moved to support its ally. It was largely annihilated away from home waters. The principal engagements were the battles of the Gulf of Oman and the engagement of the Indian Ocean. Outside of Chinese waters and its anti-access area denial systems, the Chinese Navy was no match for a NATO-Indian Navy that had been buttressed by American technology transfers. Both sides signed the Peace of Tehran under American occupation of the capital, having taken the city in less than a week by enacting another thunder run into the center of the city. China rebuilt its losses, and America again turned to its inborn isolationist impulse. American troops left Persia. 
the Islamic Republic was destroyed, and the Persian Republic would not come until a decade later, with the constituent minority groups in the country splitting into several territorial units.